Can we safely say that the human race has moved from being questioned about the whereabouts of our brothers, neighbors, families, friends, to actually knowing and caring for them? Evolution and situations of the world have made us even more conscious of the need to keep and tend our societies with the knowledge that what goes around comes around. Humanitarian services in different shapes and shades of groups have come and gone, but one group of selfless people has amazingly withstood the test of time. Today, 8th of May, members of the Red Cross Society across the globe are celebrating the World Red Cross Day to renew their commitment to providing humanitarian services at no cost to the distressed. This commitment in its 62nd year in Nigeria has actually stood unwavered for 160 years. One would therefore wonder how it has kept thriving over the years with the different policies of the world in the hands of different people as managers and in the midst of different economic situations. In all, the Red Cross Society has survived till date. In honor of the day and of the silent laborers of the organization, Crossfire Media spent some time with Mr. Ojo Laleye, the branch secretary, Red Cross Society, Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria, and here are excerpts from the interviews as conducted by our health correspondent, Mary Omotolani Oriowo. All right, my name is Ojo Olale. This of the Red Cross Day, World Red Cross Day, that is coming up on the 8th. And we know what are those things that um, Red Cross is all about. All right, thank you very much. Um, every year, May 8th um, of every year is marked to be the World uh, Red Cross Day which is uh, a remembrance of the founder of the society. He was born in the year 1828, May 8th. Okay. So for every May 8th, we use it to commemorate with him that um, his birthday is on, on that day. Oh. And Red Cross was founded in the year 1863 when Sir Dunat, who is our founder, was, um, was on a business trip in the year 1859 to see King Napoleon III of Northern Italy and on his way he met three countries fighting Italy, France against Austria and there are wounded soldiers, there is nobody to assist them. So this man was moved with the spirit of sympathy and empathy to support them and he, after leaving the place he went back to If our soldiers will be dying at war, there should be a group of people that will be supporting them that will be helping them so that they will not will not have too many people dying. And then in the year 1862, he wrote a book titled Memory of Soberino to bring in people to support the society. And in 1863, four other people joined him to start what we have today as Red Cross. So today, or this year marks 160 years of existence of Red Cross. Oh. And um, in Nigeria, it marks the 62 years of Red Cross in Nigeria. That's the Nigerian Red Cross. Life through impartiality is saying, irrespective of our type of treatment or our type of help or our type of assistance we are giving, we are not going to be biased in any form. We take everybody based on their gravity of what they need. So the society is impartial. Neutrality we have meant for everybody, whether you are male or female, boy or girl, old or young, Christian or Muslim, traditionalist, the society is for everybody because everyone belongs to human race and yeah. our humanity talks about being a woman. Then independent, we take decision of our own to support people without being coerced. Voluntary service, the service we render a service that uh, is not being demanded for uh, funds and every other thing is only support that we receive from people. Okay. Unity, we are one wherever we find ourselves. And universality, currently we are in 192 countries of the world. Okay. That's the universality. Then what do we have to do? The core of Red Cross 
mandate is the fact that we need to alleviate woman's suffering wherever it may be found. Okay. We want to alleviate woman's suffering wherever it may be found. We have first aid responses that we do to people, emergency response. We care for people, less privileged people. We visit homes. We have we run homes. Um, we empower youth. We empower mothers. We attend to any um, emergency that can happen, be it natural or natural uh, artificial disasters. We attend to epidemics that happen, make awareness for people to know, assist people to come out of it. Then we also visit communities where they are having difficulties or it's very hard for government to get access to that particular place. We also make our the presence of government through our effort to be in that particular place. All right. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I want to ask, how, how is the mode of operation these days? How is it different from what it has been in years past? You've mentioned that um, in Nigeria, it has been over 60 years in Nigeria. So what has been the difference from how it is operating now and how it was operating at that time? Is there a development or is there a, a um, coming down of... All right, the, the humanitarian support evolved over the years. And as it evolved, the Red Cross Society also evolved to it to make sure that uh, the text of time has been made up and they will be moving up to that. Before, the Red Cross was meant to support wounded soldiers. But later, we evolved to say we are not only supporting the wounded soldiers, we are supporting the wounded soldiers and the prisoners of war. We move away from wounded soldier prisoners of war to, uh, to support the shipwrecked. We move away from supporting the shipwreck to say, okay, now when there is no war any longer, we want to support everyone. So Red Cross has been moving over over time to support people. We will be moving in supporting from, let's say, this particular region of the country or the world have more finances, and we are this or that country of the world did not have finance. We try to mobilize resources to support each other. Or the, in Nigeria, uh, the mode of operations has already been increasing, fluctuating. Okay. When it started, it was expected that um, certain subvention support should be given from the government to make Red Cross much more active. But um, because it's a non-religion, non-political society, uh, political graduates and other people don't really see why they need to support Red Cross because the society will not go out all out for you to go and do campaign for you to go and say this is the person you need to support so because of that they don't see um, reason to do more support so the subvention that ought to be coming are no are not coming in but thanks to philanthropy thanks to people that are where to do that are giving support to make the society work further all right thank you very much um on on the mode, on the note of getting support, I want to ask that: Do you really get support from our political um, people, like the government, or you get from members? Basically, how do you get your funding? All right, it depends on how it comes. We get funding from you, from the community to say, okay, your one era, two era, that will put together. Are used be used to support people that are in need. The philanthropies that are where to do that we wrote to work up to pay advocacies to them. They have the support us. We have also support from the international body when they discover that what is facing a particular region of the world is beyond their own capacity to handle. They also make donations to support them. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I know that in in years past, the the Red Cross Society is almost everywhere, was almost everywhere. Let me just use it in that way, because in schools, you know, secondary schools, um, you always see Red Cross Society, with including others, Boys Brigade and all that. But in these days, we hardly see, in fact, most students don't know what Red Cross is. So why is, it, why is there um, such a change? All right, Red Cross is known all over, and... Um... The level of economic effect on everybody makes different organizations have different batching. When 
you have an organization that is voluntary. You are not being paid for. Mm -hmm. And you have not eaten in your own house. Asking some people to participate in one or two activities, you discover that it's going to be very a bit difficult. Record is almost all over everywhere. The concern we've been having is, one, government policy sometimes don't encourage us by saying, um, some people need not to go to public school if they don't get approval and every other thing. Mm. But um, we've been working in synergy to make sure that um, in the curriculum of secondary and primary school, it's going to be fixed there that there should be a red cross in their school, a red cross for state curriculum where students will be trained on what they need to do when emergency happens and making records to be much more relevant. And, um, you know, like I said, donations... Subventions are no longer coming in. Few donations that are coming in are the ones that we are using to run the activities of the society, which is making it to have some impediment in doing as it ought to work optimally. Okay, so with that now, are we going to say that Red Cross looks like it is dying? Because since donations are not coming in and it's not working optimally as it ought to be or as it used to be, so are we going to just say that it is dying, it is going into extinction. Well, Red Cross is not going into extinction powerfully. I, I can categorically tell you today that um, in our state, we have over 2,000 volunteers of the society that are working. It's just that um, the busyness and the commitment for people to earn living is getting more difficult. So to have extra time to start doing voluntary activities becomes reduced. But we are still forging ahead. We are moving on to make sure that Every nook and cranny of the state, the effect of Red Cross is being felt. Okay, um, for those that are volunteering for Red Cross, how do mm -hmm. you, how is there any anything like compensation, anything like appreciation to motivate people to join um, the association? What basically, when you want to join Red Cross or when you are joining an organization like this, the basic thing that comes to your mind is, or the basically that we keep at the back of people's mind is. Don't look at the rewards that you are going to get from the society. Mm -hmm. Look at the rewards that you are going to get yourself that place you to say, I am saving people's life. Mm -hmm. I am imparting people's life. Because if you are looking at a reward, in reward or in terms of money, reward in terms of material, the society may not be able to give. But if you are looking at the reward in terms of you getting a fulfilled life, mm -hmm. the society is going to give you. So we reward our volunteers we appreciate them each and every year. For this year, the, the, the pictures of volunteers that are doing active work are there. Like yesterday that we are doing part of the week activities that we are doing, we are back to visit our aged members that have been a, a member of the society since 1947, 1948. We went back to go and visit them. And they are very much more happy to say, ah, yes, the society still remember them. And they are even encouraging us to say, yes, saving life has been the happiest thing they ever do in life. And we should also continue doing it. Wow, that's very good. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I also want to ask that in training your members, the volunteers, is there a particular um, setup for training them? Like, do you get professionals like no, doctors, nurses to come and train your members for you? or you just based on their own experience or their right. own professionalism? The society is, um, is well known for its professionalism in first aid and emergency responses. And um, the society trains its members every year in, year out for them to be updated. We have a, a criteria of ranking in the society where okay. from a basic first aid certificate order to the last one, which is um, trainers, first day certificate order we are able to train and uh, we train our members once in a year for a general training and that's um, between during the long vacation where our members we camped to train everyone on the skills and knowledge of first aid. So and intermediately when emergencies rise up or there is need for more training we call people for training based on disaster, based on epidemics that happens risk communications and everything. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Um, you mentioned that this week you are commemorating the um, World Red Cross Day that will 
that is meant to be on on the 8th which is next week monday so i want to ask that subsequent years like the years that has passed you've been celebrating it this way marking it this way has there been um a particular or let me say this last year was there a particular goal that was set for red cross society and that was met that you can say okay we set this goal for the society and we were able to reach this goal before this year's um anniversary all right yeah the societies always have a goal the society has always flow along with what happens in the environment okay and one of the goal of the society last year was the fact that the level of vaccinations when it comes to COVID-19 vaccination okay. within the country, especially in Nigeria, is low. And the society target to say, okay, we want to make sure that the level at which people are being vaccinated increase to a level. Okay. And that's why we have a program that is saying we need to get to the into the community to do what we call um, risk communication and assessment to tell people about what is happening and the way they need to and we have achieved it by, by, by this time, Nigeria is 75% vaccinated. Nigerian population, 75% vaccinated, which is a pass mark. Okay. That's the goal. Another goal that the society is looking at is whenever there is a natural or artificial disaster, the society aim at saying we want to be very much more out there to give if humanitarian support to people that are affected. and. Uh, you know, the, the, the past year, we have flood almost all the 36 states of the Federation, experienced flooding, and then the society was able to reach all the affected people by giving out humanitarian support to support them. So there's always been support uh, targets that we've been having had always been met, even with the difficulties of the economic finances. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, this year's theme for the Red Cross anniversary. I think it's from the heart, am yeah. I right? So can you tell us what it is all about? What's the mind behind that? Well, what prompts the team for this year is, is saying our work that we do is not something that someone is, if still go back to one of our principles that says voluntary service. Mm -hmm. That is what prompts us to do what we are doing. It is not because of someone is saying something. It is what I want to do that is from my heart. The joy of participating, the joy of serving humanity is not just because I see my father doing it, I see my friend doing it, or my country is afflating to it. It is something that through me, inside me, from the act of from my own heart, I am ready to serve humanity. That's just what prompted. Last year, we the, the topic was um um how can I remember? Uh -huh. Get involved. Um, be humankind. Saying that is for us to be a member of the society, for us to be participating, we must be humankind. And if you are going to be humankind, it must come from your heart. So the sequence is following to say if you are going to be humankind, all your service to support humanity must be from your heart. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. And it is for us the society as well as the Red Cross to wish to, to actually wish to see. Uh, the Red Cross are actually wish to see. I, I've been seeing it, but we still need to improve. And the way we need to improve is for public to understand that there's not only government that needs to support the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Every one of us needs to support Red Cross. Okay. And it is one thing we need to under, also understand is that emergency disasters are not going to be the one that they are going to tell us. So, all of us more have the mindset to start preparing for the dry season at the rainy season now. Your one nera, your two nera, as a donation that we are giving to society to keep, when emergency now happens, we will be able to work up with the resources that we have kept behind. So my dreams society is a society where members of the public understand that they need to support us such that when emergency happens, we, we are going to support back the society. All right. Um, I also want to ask a question that the society, what are those that can join? What are those that are expected to join?